Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Celtic Down Under, hosted by Sean, joined by Anthony and Paul, the West Australian edition. How are you doing, Anthony? Very well, Sean. Um, good to be back after a, a week off. Um, European, oh, sorry, international break. So we took the opportunity to recharge our batteries and gear up for the next uh, sort of spell of uh, not only league action, but um, obviously Champions League action coming up. Uh, this week as well so good time to be a Celtic fan see see all those people right that say oh they're not interested in women's football or any of them can any of them honestly say that they would rather watch an international friendly than any game of women's football I, well, as, uh, uh, well as, uh, so <laughs> it, it's a fair point Sean because um, the Matildas game here in Perth has just been moved to a bigger stadium so it's drawn from our rectangular 20,000 seater stadium to our oval shaped 60,000 seater stadium because they've sold about 40,000 tickets so that's positive um so i would say that there are people willing to pay to watch women's friendlies um or or is that another no, qualifier I mean, for versus a competitive game you know like it's just so mm. boring and tonight nobody wants to be there in the men's game just it's just a training exercise it is so and pointless anyway yeah so yeah obviously we did have the game against cyprus which mattered and then the game against england that they like to pretend it mattered but really it didn't paul how are you yeah good sean uh pretty good for a monday uh, good weekend great result um yeah bit of time bit of time to myself yesterday which was was very uh pleasant recharge my batteries as, as anthony said and uh yeah not a bad monday at work as well so you know wonders will never cease um yeah, looking forward to getting back into it. Obviously, a big week um, with this tonight and then the big game tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to us or yesterday. And that's, that's true. Yeah. Recorded on Monday, on probably out on Tuesday. Yeah, we can touch on it briefly. Um, hopefully, bef- some people listen before it happens and hopefully we'd, people that listen after, we don't look too foolish with uh, any predictions. Um, yeah, so hectic week myself our football season's just finished so uh yeah i've got one more bounce game tomorrow night but apart from that it's uh all wrapping up and it's about to get hit the cricket so it's going to be a few barren months in a sense anthony uh are you going to be playing next season um i think you have to work on your uh recruitment pitch there sean um Maybe we sign on fee or something, but no, I, no, no intentions at the moment. Um, I'm back into my gym training. My PT has just stepped it up massively, so um, I've been very, very sore all in the last week. Um, so my mate G has been sorting me out, and um, I don't want to undo that hard work by uh, pulling a hammy uh, by trying to kick football because that's generally what happens every time I do try and do that. You need to keep out, keep away from the weights. That's why you do your hammy because you're carrying too much body mass. You <laughs> no, sure, body. I'm carrying too much body mass anyway. But like you know, at least if it, was mu- if it was muscle, that'd be a little bit better than uh, you know, fat. But um, but yeah, but no, um, no plans at the moment, Sean. But yeah, you've all summer to work on me, so you never know. We'll see. Yeah, always, always be recruiting, Paul. You as well. Um, you got forty fives. So, I'll consider it. <laughs> oh, I'm too well, young for that. Yeah, I'm not far off, unfortunately. And I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely too old for 35s, I'll tell you that. Ugh. Done with that. Anyway, on to Celtic. Uh, what did we make of Dundee's visit to, to Glasgow? It was after Sevco had played, which is par for the course over the last year, right? Sevco play first, then we play, we follow up, and that's what happened again this weekend. Uh, don't really want to talk about their game, to be honest. What what's happened? What happened at Celtic Park? Paul, how did you see it? Yeah, without farming out a massive cliche, it was it was a game of two halves, wasn't it? But I think if we start if we start with the lineups, then lazy, lazy cliche. It is a well, it is a lazy cliche, but it was it was pretty apt for a change. Um, if you start the lineups, I think the lineup for me was pretty much as expected. Um, with possibly, I I was hoping home would start. So, the, so Turnbull starting was probably the, the major surprise for me. Um, I thought Scales would have done enough to keep his place, um, given how he played at Snake Mountain. Um, Phillips 
was always going to get game time. They wheeled him out for the, the, the press conference and he's obviously been brought in short term for Champions League cover. So he was bound to get minutes and it made sense to start him. Rogers obviously said later that he wanted he thought he would get 60 minutes out of him. He rolled his, his ankle right on half time. So he precaution as a precaution came off after 45. Um so so yeah, for me, like and, and you obviously a bad is injured, so we had to have somebody in on the right, and, and it sort of made sense given sort of the, the, the bits and pieces Yang's had off the bench. He was probably favourite. So so for me, really the only surprise is Turnbull kept his place. I thought home had done enough to probably force his way in. Um and then sure enough, obviously he he does get the goal, albeit from the penalty spot, but he wins the penalty as well. So look, I, I thought I, there's a lot of people sort of slated the first half performance and said it was absolutely dire. I don't think it was as bad as all that. Like, you know, if if Mera gets you know gets that uh, offside just just a, a fat fraction earlier, then it's a great finish. And you know, the first goal is always going to be be crucial. Um. We'll get into more depth, but I, I thought we did. We weren't as bad as all that first half, but it did really click into gear. And and I think the goal gets us the goal gets us the sort of um, ability to the freedom to play and a bit of relaxation. And then we knocked it about really well um, from there. Uh, and the subs all added something as well, and we got a few debutants through. So um, it, for me, it's it, you know job done. Three 0 clean sheet. Um, more minutes under the belt for for some of the guys coming back from injury and, and minutes for for some of the new bo- new boys um we will touch i guess on on tuesday you know, sort of coming thick and fast but as far as that you know premier league tie goes quite happy with it i'm going to disagree i thought the first half was dire uh to use the word that you to paraphrase yourself there i i thought and and not just in the context of you know being frustrated but in the context of the previous uh, three domestic games combined with that one, yeah, we dominated possession at, uh, at Mordor, but like we're really not playing with any urgency, playing incisiveness, imagination, creative. There's a lot of things lacking uh, in in our game, and I'm split to be honest on whether the second half performance was a result of us going one 0 up or whether it was a result of David Turnbull getting subbed. And honestly, uh, I'm leaning towards uh, the fact that it was 1-0 and Dundee had to kind of open up a little bit because, um, honest to God, at halftime, I was thinking to myself, uh, this is going to have to be some sort of Sevco effort where we have to rely on a penalty to get a 1-0 lead and then we score another one later to put the gloss on it. Anthony, argue. Uh, am I right? Am I wrong? Is it Was it the 1-0 or was it turned going off? I think it's somewhere in the middle, Sean. It's... Um... I would characterize the first half as a safe performance. Um, I don't think we were um, forcing the issue enough. I think there was opportunity to maybe play that more difficult pass, but we chose to play the safe, comfortable pass. Um, Greg Taylor, for me, was one that always played it back or slowed the play down. Um, Turnbull was another one that never really sort of got going. Yang... A lot of effort and a lot of feet moving very quickly, but not a lot of output, not a lot of actual end product. So when you factor that in, uh, Phillips, solid debut, but again, when he pushed into those higher areas, the passes went everywhere. Um, So that first half just had a few things going on that just undermined you know, our ability to to get a lead in that first half. You always felt one goal and it was all, you know, the, the, not the floodgates were going to open, but it just takes that pressure off. The crowd relaxed, the, the team sort of spurs them on and it, it all goes from there sort of thing. So as Paul touched on, Maeda with an excellent chance, he took it really well. Unfortunately, he just took that one step too early. Um, I think... Celtic TV, I mean, it would have been nice to see the actual proper line drawn, but at no point was that shown. So, again, we're trusting the uh, the VR officials. That um, bit for tin, a cinch moment of the week. or Bit tin, bit, bit tin pot as usual. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and then Maida that had that other chance, that quick feet where the keeper, he hit it straight at the keeper. But, again, that was a, that was a good chance as well. So, created probably two good chances there. Um, but, again, you're sitting there at halftime going... Was that enough? Was that was that a satisfactory first half? And you'd have to say no, it's not. You'd say that we, like I said, I I liken it to being we were playing too safe. It wasn't that we we're playing bad. 
It wasn't that Dundee were playing out of their skin, although Dundee probably created the best chance of the first half, um, which we'll which we'll touch on. Um, Joe Hart pulling an excellent save, but um, you know, nil all at half time. You're thinking we need a we need a bit more. We need a bit more dynamism. We need players to be a little bit more adventurous. And obviously, we get the goal before Rio comes on. Um, but I, to, to back to your question, Sean, sorry, I went a long way around there. Um, I think it was more a function of the the changes because if anything, Dundee, I thought, actually sat in more after the goal went in than before. Because to the fairness in the first half, they were playing with three up front, you know, three up top. Um, so I felt that they sort of sat in. Well, I know, but they sat, you know, compared to some teams, they were they were playing with a forward presence, um, and. You know, when we we scored, yeah, okay. You know, that was around about the time we started making changes as well. But I think it was the changes. That's the first time all season where we've actually strengthened with subs coming off the bench. Because up until now, it's been the other way around. Um, so, you know, with this probably exception of Kyogo and, you know, maybe Matt O'Reilly, we probably finished the game stronger than we did starting, um, which is a good sign. But, you know. You mentioned that they had three up front, but at the same time, Nat Phillips is running up to the edge of the D like multiple times in the first half, right? So it's not like he, as many, no matter what their their formation is, right? They're still all in their own third of the. But pitch what was but what was, he, right? what was he doing with it though? Like you know, if you're going to no, give I, it, no, you, yeah, I'm but, not but, but saying, I'm saying that, that like you know, it might, it might be a bit, yeah, it might be deliberate on them to dip, let the centre halves have it because they know that that's you know that's probably been our bit of Achilles' heel so far this season is that. The centre half pushing in, whoever it's been, because obviously we've had a, a bit of a, you know, we've, we've gone through every combination just about imaginable so far. And we're only at like five games into the season, um, so you know, I, I think that's you know they probably looked at that and went, well, I would rather them have it than Callum McGregor have it or you know Turnbull or O'Reilly. But um, yeah, but that's my um, my thoughts, particularly on the first half, but a lot better in the second half. Just the the chances created, the movement, just the, the the pressing, just in general, was better. Um, so happy to discuss that. Um, you know, with you guys, what you I, think? I think. Sorry, Sean. Yeah. Another thing I would no, say about this. Quick, is... Quickly, one thing. Sorry, if we have a centre back that could play a through ball or hit a shot from twenty five yards, like we had with Virgil Van Dyke back in the day, they would absolutely feast at the moment. Paul, sorry, carry on. I was just going to say, like, you know, you, you've said, you know, it's is it the goal or is it is it the subs coming on? There's the other factor in here is that. We were a bit subpar first half. I'm not trying to gloss it and say we were excellent. But if a team's well drilled and does their job, they're always going to be better for the first 45, 60 minutes than they are post that. We have we had, what, 72, 74% of the, the ball for the whole game. They're doing more running. Eventually, if you move them around long enough, they tire, they make mistakes, you eventually break them down. So... I don't think it's, you can't just go, I know we're always going to focus on us, but the opposition are there to make a game of it or, or stifle us or, or do whatever they want. And I, and you, I think you've got to say that, that Dundee were, were pretty well drilled, especially first half. Um, we didn't do enough. Um, but but you yeah, look, if Mayer at times is run better, it's a brilliant finish. If he doesn't hit it straight at, like, you know, it's, I think the, 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 that first one he create that, that, that we create, Taylor, is actually the guy. I know you said he went back a lot. He finds himself on the edge of the box and clips a lovely little chip over the top. Beta controls it brilliantly on the chest, drops it down, and then he hits it. He hits it probably too clean, if anything, because it hits it clean and too straight, and it just hits off Cat Cash and makes himself big, and he has a good stop. If that goes either side of him, then then we're up one 0 there as well. And then yeah, it was a bit of a, a, a deflection, but O'Reilly's had one off the post as well. So so feasibly, there's three pretty half decent chances in the first half any one of those goes in it's a different conversation about the first half um and then yeah we come out of the block second half and 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 get the get the penalty and and it's happy days from there so so there are, there is another element there's a, there was a lot of stuff going on in the first half that was just a little bit disjointed and i think phillips is was, was you know a part of that and that's just because he's settling into the to the back line i was really pleased to see taylor really play pretty much inverted for the whole match like he he was finding himself in the middle and on and around the, f the fringes of, of their penalty box regularly in that first half, less so in the second half because we were we were pressing further forward um, and there were more attacking options. He didn't have to do that as much. 
but I, to me that sort of I don't know how we'll line up on 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 the Champions League match, but certainly domestically, it looks like from the face of that is we're get, he's going to encourage Taylor to to play more of that inverted role, and if that's the case, then long may it continue because he certainly looks better inside and on the deck than he does trying to be outside and 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 you know play more like a bombing on. So the I'm other conscious point, that we're back. being very sorry. I'm conscious that we're being very doom and gloomy about this first half, but I think it's it's kind of valuable. And, and I just I had an observation on it in the the context of the the five plus halves of football that we or even more that we played that haven't been great domestically. Uh, but then another way to look at it is as you mentioned, we've got the midweek in Europe. So like when I'm watching it, players are strolling right, and we're used to what we you've mentioned the first half chances there, right? Those are the sort of chances we wouldn't even be. I've been talking about in a home game in the last two seasons because you'd be creating as many chances as we created over 90 minutes. Uh, you'd be getting that in the first 30 minutes of a post Chicago team, right? So we're used to having 20 plus chances in goal, and now we're, we're half that now. But we're, we're looking for clinical, you know, it's all about efficiency. And I'm watching the players, they've got a great structure, they've got great shape, but they're kind of just jogging when they're in their zone that they're supposed to be in. They're just jogging about and they're not. There's no real urgency to get out of the zones. They're just kind of waiting for the pass or waiting for things to happen around them. There's no, they're not trying to make things happen. You, even Roger said at post game that we had more urgency in the second half. And I don't, urgency sounds like an absolute facile way to put it, right? Like, oh, uh, you just need to up the urgency. Obviously, there's more to it than that, but the players are strolling. Uh, but what they are being is disciplined around their shape. Now, disciplined football is is generally boring football, but what it could be as successful football uh, when we come to Europe, to, you know, cavalier versus disciplines, you know, it's, it's that whole thing. Sorry, Anthony, did you want to address, talk no, about that? So the only thing, to, yeah. no, no, the, the only thing I was just trying to touch on when Paul made, uh, made, so I half made the point was that Dundee as a squad had two weeks to prepare for that game. You know, half our squad or whatever is all around the world playing, you know, in Asia, playing in Europe, playing wherever. And they come back, you know, in some cases, like less than 24 hours before they've got to play or be part of the squad again. So, you know, that discipline that, that Paul's talking about, that, you know, they've had time to drill that in and and, and, and practice that. So I think that is that is definitely a factor. Um, anyway, Even just know, the fitness, kind of... right? Even just the yeah. fitness. McGregor's played 180 minutes. Palmer's played 180 minutes and just got off the plane less Out than 24 plane. hours later. That's why he's yeah. on the bench. Do you know what I mean? Like, th th there's a lot to be said for that. And, and, you know, a few changes to the first team just takes a bit to click. I know okay. thing. Maeda didn't play much for Japan, but it's also disconcerting that he plays 90 minutes against Dundee before we're expecting him to be a crucial player in, in the Netherlands, right? So, but the, uh, came off, the other thing, yeah, he came off after about 70, did he not? 65, 70. Was he not the one that survived? I thought he'd survived. Oh, my oh no, sorry, he did. Sorry, yeah, no, you did. Off. You're right. Kyogre, did. Kyogre did. came off. Um, but the other thing as well is that okay. Rogers doesn't seem to be the sort of manager, particularly this time around, that throws players in for for start debuts. Like he's very much like you know, Tumble was the, the example here. Like he could have thrown Bernardo in, he could have went with home, but he's sticking with Tumble now, rightly or wrongly. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it necessarily. But... Like anyone does. <laughs> no, but but like you know, he's obviously Tumble, looking Tumble's at it. Mom. He's, and Brendan, he's, he seems to he seems to think it's a good idea. He's um he's sticking to a a pattern, so as it will. So you know, I wouldn't be you know, I don't think there's gonna be many changes for for the final game. Put it that way, I'd be very surprised. I think the team that started will pretty much be, you know, I think you can maybe make a case for um maybe the winger um rather than um Yang. Um, having having silver there, but otherwise I I can't really Palmer. see it. Sorry, Palmer. Sorry, Palmer. Um, I can't really see it changing all that much because he's just he's not doing that. He's not he's not doing the edge where he signs a player and then chucks him in on a two days later sort of thing. That's not how he's. That's not his modus operandi here. So you know, Hatati's you find... got to start though, surely. Hatati's well, I think. Start... Well, yeah. That would be the that would be the the, the potential one to come I, in. I'm with well. I'm with you. I think Palmer should start on the left and made a play on the right, um, unless there's something about their right back that needs to be kept in a box that we don't know. Like, obviously, I don't know too much on them, but I've not heard a massive amount um, on them. Their fullbacks pushing forward, um, but yeah, that, to me, it's Pal I would start with Palmer over Yang and 
definitely hit that over Turnbull. But I'd leave the back four as is. 6 1 at the weekend against some team I've never heard of. Uh, it was Heravine, so they're de- half decent side. Oh, no. Our, our other two, oh, our other two opposition got beat. The last few games, 6 5 and 6 goals. The last three domestic. Yes, yeah, 6 1, 5 1, 6 1. Um, all so teams. So, the week at the back. Um, all, all, all teams in the bottom the bottom third. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all teams in the bottom third. Uh, I had a little check on this earlier. Um, and they're, the two games they've played, they are coming into some form, but admittedly it's against poor opposition. The first two games were drawn in there on the sides one and two places below them. So they've they've won three and drawn two. They're sitting fourth in the area of VC. So they've played a game more than the teams above them. So they've had an okay start with but they've but they have scored a fair few goals. I was reading and listening to some bits and pieces and on, on previewing the game elsewhere and it seems to be a bit, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be terrified of, of the, the fact that they're scoring a fair few goals. It's, it seems like when we were chucking them in against bottom of the league fodder. So, uh, and they've got issues in terms of players missing, goalkeepers broken his wrist, backup goal is in, first two ch- first first choice striker and second choice striker both out. Um, so it probably, it probably is a bit lucky for us that that's the case because we're going to have second choice centre backs and they're going to have third choice strikers. So, uh, and by all accounts, their midfield is probably, they've got a really a strong back four, but not quick. So, you know, that gives us an advantage potentially there with Kyogo and Mieda and their midfield's decent without being, you know, amazing. That's not really fully, that's an area that apparently needs to to be, they've lost their, their best midfielder, went to Benfica. So bits and pieces of, of yeah, they have to give you some optimism, but the record at home is amazing. So, uh, yeah, it'd be one of those, we'll have, we'll have to play absolutely out our skin and we might get something out of the game, I would suggest so yeah, they've got a new the Dutch have got the new TV deal as well. It's 135 million a year. Yeah, I did see that. Scotland's still on 25, something like that, 20, 25. Look, they have got a better product, let's be honest. They've 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 got better the quality of football's better and they've got sort of three or four teams that are at a decent level, as opposed to just one or two. Um, but we're enough we are doing a terrible job marketing it, which is Obviously, they're they're doing a better job than us. And our deal doesn't run out until twenty twenty nine. So not only is it a bad deal, but it's we're stuck with that bad deal for quite a while. They they also have fewer games as well. There's only thirty four games in a season, and they've still got. Do I mean so? They've only got one cup as well. (laughs) It's like it's really (laughs) it's really what it's really what annoys me about Scottish football is the 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 running of it, the marketing of it, the management of it. Like there's guys in there that have been in that those positions for such a long time, and there seems to be no blowback, no consequences of poor decision making year on year. They seem to get away with it, and nothing ever changes. And it's just, and they wonder why we're in this as a situation we're in as a league, as a national team. Or the national team's doing well. Don't me wrong, but you know, it's just. It's just sad. It's like we're a country that football is our, you know, it's a, it's a primary sport. This is like the sport that everyone watches, where there's a lot of other countries where football is down the, down the ladder of sports. And we just can't seem to get it right. And it's just, like I say, it's frustrating the world. Well, the national so. team's performing in spite of how the game's been run, in no way because of how the game's been run. Yeah, you know, we say, happen to have a few players come through together, and Steve Clark's as pragmatic a manager as you would you would find. So, how many how many players in the Scotland squad last week came from this academy that they're shouting about? Two, I think, if I remember correctly, out of the twenty six to twenty eight players. So, you're it just you have to have players playing in good leagues. Uh, I think having Scottish players leave and go overseas helps. You know, you then don't have the problem like the. Aidan McGeady style problem where you're stuck in Glasgow drinking with your friends instead of taking your football seriously. But if you go to Italy, then maybe you do have to knuckle down, right? Um, yeah, that that that. But yeah, I think the Dutch Dutch league have banned artificial surfaces. We could start there for one. You know, bigger top flight, less chance of getting relegated, all that sort of stuff, right? And then you can start getting young players a game if there's if you're not constantly uh, a five game losing run away from. Uh, losing your job do you know what i mean 
chuck the kids in with it for you at that point. There's so much more we could do. It's, it's Scottish football was run by absolute monkeys. Uh, yeah, it's jobs for the boys, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> doing so much. Anyway, back to the, the Celtic Dundee game. Uh, Indeed. We've, we, we have done our very doom and gloom bit, so do you want to uh, be positive about the second half for us then, Paul? Get started on that. Anthony's having a bit of a lagging issue, but I think he's back now. Yeah. So, so yeah, once, once the goal goes in, and, you know, you know, I guess we touch on VAR doing its job for once, is, um, yeah, look, it, if the players, obviously it was a clear foul on... On Turnbull, the ref gave the foul. He's only about three or four yards away and he doesn't see it's inside the box. Fair enough. Um, that's what, what VAR's for, I guess. Um, he gives the he gives the foul. He gets this little spray can out and every about three or four Celtic players that are anywhere near the vicinity are sort of pointing point, out, a, point. pointing to a big, a big gouge out of the pitch where he landed or where his foot was taken. Um, and then sure enough, here, VAR. Here's the blood. <laughs> VAR gives the decision and, and, and it'll I guess the good thing about VAR is that is really the stuff that it's it's there for. That's a, that's a pretty obvious error. In, in any other season prior to last year, we'd have just had to wear that and it would have been a free kick outside the box. But obviously, a quick look doesn't even have to go to a monitor. You know, VAR says, well, yeah, it's inside. It's a penalty. <laughs> And then, but I don't, I don't think it was that egregious a decision from the ref in the first place. My, honestly, my first two viewings, I didn't think it was in the box, and it's only when you mm. see the the sideline camera that is obviously mm. in the box. Do you know what I mean like, but from the halfway line camera, to me, it looked like it was outside the box, which is yeah, an okay, but, but, ref but, that. but well, the re- the ref's closer to the side on angle. Close, than, but than the angle. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, like where the ball yeah. is and all that stuff, right? You know, like. But look, we, they get they get it right eventually, and yeah. you know Turnbull confidently smashes it down the middle, and and we're we're away and we're up and running. Um, and so and so from the but from there, obviously that's fifty one minutes. I think uh, mm-hmm. let I might as well I'll lead straight into the McGregor McGregor's um, assist for Kyogo's goal. It's just you you like unlikely to see a better assist and finish and run. Um, I'd be surprised if you see a better a better link up than that all season. To be honest, the the timing of the run is phenomenal. Uh, little shout out to Mieda, who's come off his left wing. He's drifted into the inside right channel, uh, almost swapping places with Kyogo. Kyogo's coming, you know, he's drifted out. The fullback who had been terrorised by Mieda all game until he switched to the right wing gets caught watching Kyogo drift in between him and the, and the centre back. The centre backs a little deeper than the full back. The right back's got his arm up for offside. Kyogo's timed around perfectly, and McGregor's just, you know, got the old sand wedge yeah. out and, and and dropped an absolute inch perfect cross into that space. And Kyogo's attacked it and, and 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 buried the header. It's just a really really good goal uh, right out of the top draw. Um, and we're, they're patient in there. So McGregor's knocked it off to Hatati. Hatati knocks it to O'Reilly. They take it back, and eventually. There's no pressure on the ball. Um, I think a couple of them sort of ganged up on Robinson and and took the ball off him, and then he stayed down. And I think that that him staying down at, sort of half through Dundee a bit. I think they sort of were waiting for us to put the ball out of play, and was like, "Well, it's not a head injury, so we're definitely not going to do that." They just sort of stood about looking at the ref, and you know, then McGregor, you know, gets the wand out and, and drops it in. Um, and from there, we're home and hosed, really. And 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 then it goes, you know, the, the subs come on and we start knocking it about. And and really, it could have been five or six by the end. Um, Alistair Johnson has two off the woodwork. Um, there's other ones blocked and saves and should do better. But, but yeah, it was, it was a really good, really good performance from, from sort of 50 minutes onwards. Yeah, I thought the, that was the first time we've ever had this ref, uh, Grant Irvin. I thought he had a decent game. It's a very... Uh, Masonic sounding name, but I thought he was good. I thought he got. I mean, not like I don't think the penalty was. I wouldn't give him too much stick for that. Uh, and I think I've now. And I'm either, but I guess it falls well. into that clear and obvious, right? So, well, you know, VR does job, right? like, and, yeah. So, but I think overall he had a good game. Like, I mean, that, but that's been a kind of theme. Like once we've got, we've shaken when we don't get these. Your, you know, your Dallas, your uh, Nick Walsh. Uh, you, McLean, you know, the one who was a, a mascot for Sevco, the one who literally works for Sevco and Nick Walsh. Uh, when we get away from these guys, we actually seem to get a decent shake at home. You know, it's a bit, uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, 
Yeah, and then and I see I read one article I write up in the game. Uh, and I'm embarrassed for falling for this clickbait crap, but I clicked on it anyway and read. Uh, the first goal, the first goal, the penalty was described twice as debatable. Uh, the our second goal was described as controversial. Uh, and the third goal, I believe, was described as academic, uh, as in, oh, you know, doesn't really matter, doesn't count, not not really a worthy goal, despite well, the fact it was a sensational through ball from Alison Johnson, etc. Yeah, even even the BBC, I just, I've got it in front of me because I had it for the team lines, and I just, it reminded me with that, it says, uh, David Turnbull made the vital breakthrough from the penalty spot after the Scotland midfielder went down on the edge of the penalty box. <laughs> Did he? Did he? Did he go down, or did he get fouled? No contact, like, no foul. Yeah, I, I don't know where they get it from. And obviously, the orcs have gone up, and you know they're all over social media saying it's exactly the same as the the challenge on Lagabielka with um, the the coming together. It's just I don't know what they're drinking over there, but you know it's obviously good for a a bit of mind altering substance because they're away with it. Absolutely. You know, fairies with that stuff, but yeah, like the media is the media. You know, the usual story. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pass over to Anthony to to yeah. give us some summary on the third goal and any other um, positivity on the he's got half. for the second half. Was the well, second half controversial? Was the second half debatable? Was it academic? No, I, I'd say it was inevitable. Um, no, like where do I start? I, I don't think it was an overly difficult game to referee. I don't think there was many contentious issues. There wasn't any bad tackles that I can remember throughout the game. It was a pretty clean game of football. So I think the referee didn't have much to do. I think, you know, he was he was fine. He didn't overly stop playing. It was once or twice where he, he dragged play back and sort of held us up a little bit. But for the most part, the game flowed. Um, so from that point of view, yeah, I think he, played, he did all right. I mean, yeah, I... I don't know where he was placing the free kick in relation to the penalty. Like, you know, if anything, it would be right on the, it was very close to the line and he set the ball at least a few yards back. So I don't think he quite got that that right. But like I said, VAR did its thing. Um, what else? Um, yeah, the water boundary with, you know, or that that tackle on tumble for the penalty is the same as the one with Lider Belker and whatever. That's... <laughs> no, I it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's delightful. It's delicious. It's, it's delicious. It. It's still going on. I mean, they should be happy. They should be happy with a plucky 2 0 win against St. Johnson, really. I mean, because let's face it, St. Johnson should have had a penalty, but let's not digress. Um, their run of, what, well, we're up to about 60 games now without a it's penalty. Exactly really. 60. 60 the, they, games. There you go. So we'll part that to one side. Mickey Beal survives another week, which is good. We'll keep him, we'll keep him in a job a bit longer. Um, so, so that aside, um, yeah, it was a penalty. I think, in, in fairness to David Turnbull, he made a good run past just before the um, the penalty. So there was that. I went, oh, this, if he did more of that, you're thinking, well, that would be okay because it, that's the sort of when you're making those runs past the defense and you stretch was that and play. The, is that the scales clip over the top? Yes. Yes, oh, he did that a few times, skills. He did that. He did. He did. I think he, I counted three, at least three quality sort of clips over the top that, that actually connected. But that sort of movement is what creates chances and, and opens opens up play and creates opportunities. And he, and the first half didn't didn't do it. And, and so the second half, you think, well, all right, if there's more of that, then that's okay. But doing that once in the second half and then getting taken out for a penalty, is that enough for you, one of your centre midfielders? Probably not. And then the other thing was that I was looking at the stats and when um, Bernardo came on, he'd only had two less presses than Turnbull had for the whole game, the time that Turnbull was on the park and, and Bernardo was on for like, what, 15, 20 minutes of that? So that to yeah, me I speaks volumes. You. I believe that. Speaks that. volumes. Anyway, mm -hmm. so let's put, put that to one side. So we scored the penalty, took it well, great, 1-0. And then obviously a bit of brilliance between uh, McGregor and Kyogo. And I think, like you say, a lot of that was Hatati, the press, the pressure. And that, for me, felt like the difference. I know we're obviously debating what the difference was. And, and in football, it's never one thing. There's always, it's a multitude of factors and various percentages of those factors. But I think Hatati just brings an energy that, cannot be replicated with a David Turnbull in centre mid. It just it just can't. He's just he's just more dynamic. He just presses better. 
makes better decisions when he's on the ball and just gets the team seemingly humming, going, just better to watch. Um, and it just spurred them on for the rest of the game. Um, and then obviously, uh, to, to, you know, second goal, third goal was was a beautiful, was a beautiful, you know, academic textbook, whatever you want to call it. But you know, if Celtic played football like that, there's not many teams in Scotland that can to, that can defend against that and put up put, put up a, a solid uh, defense against that. So three 0 you know, yeah, AJ hits hits the woodwork. Probably should have cut it back for O right enough. Um, o had a wee snap at one. Um, so you know, all in all, three 0 job done. And I think as you put the nail on nail on the head there, Sean, without really bursting a gut to an extent. It wasn't like a, I've, I've said this previously, it's not like an Ange performance where they're expected to just press and press and press and press and press. We did the job, players were more structured. When it was in their zone, yeah, pressure, but conserving energy to a point. So hopefully going into you know, the game tomorrow night, um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're fresh enough and we're not not lagging um, because we're going to need it. <laughs> because let's face it, final are going to be a good team. It's going to be a challenge. They're going to be better, you know, it's going to be more of a challenge than playing the, the Huns at Ibrox. So we're going to have to we're going to have to be on our game. Um, and you know, I think a three 0 win at home. You know, no real injury concerns. Obviously, Kilgo popping his shoulder, and I think he went down the touchline for a wee Sean McManus pop it back in, um, which is a concern. Um, but apart from that, you know, we, we what, got off that game. Was it reference for anyone listening in Scotland? Yes, free mount of Docker stalwart. Um, <laughs> but it's quite a common, quite a common injury in for like the, the dissertation. Thanks, Sean, I was just... lost too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, so like I said, so I think, you know, going in, we're, we're like, I think in a reasonably good place. I mean, obviously, you'd like CCV back. You would like a more solid centre-half pairing. You know, there's there's obviously, you know, we'd probably like Hatati have played a couple of games, but we've got what we've got. But I think, you know, we beat the Huns, we've had an international break, we've come back, we've we've put Dundee at the sword, 3-0, come away with a pretty good feeling. I don't think you, you at this point in time, I don't think you can ask could ask for much more, really, going into right. going into the first could, Champions League game. We could ask right, I know you the could League Cup, right? But um yeah, yes, get... but but real uh, no being all right, we're knocked out of the league cup, but like as of like now, given everything that's happened, like I think you know you, you, you realistically can't can't do any more be in a better position than we are. We gave we gave time to Bernardo and um Palmer. I keep thinking, what's this other Palmer? So we've got players there who are now starting to get game time, and yet yeah, they might not feature much tomorrow night, but they're going to start featuring more and more. And Brendan Rogers said that. He says, yeah, players didn't get, didn't get starts tonight, but they're, they're going to be integral to this league campaign. Um, and we're going to see rotation. Uh, Rogers isn't going to pick the same team every every week. He, he, doesn't, he won't have that luxury. He's going to have to rotate through the squads. So I'm quite excited to see what that brings because, you know, the Ange team, you know, for better or worse, he could pretty much pick it most weeks like barring maybe one change like it was pretty set in stone so it'll be interesting to see what 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 brendan comes up with it's it's interesting because uh winning and losing games really controls that narrative like uh you know the mickey beale across the city he's getting you know he doesn't know his start his best lineup etc cetera, etc cetera. and then if you're winning games it's yes great opportunity to rotate the squad rest players etc so uh, you know if you win games really it's irrelevant what you do it's the narrative gets uh, fed back onto it um in the alistair johnson uh post-match interview uh he said something that was uh, a, a flag for me otherwise it's a red flag but it was a flag uh, where he he, he kind of credited the second half turnaround to the opposition tiring, and to me that says that the halftime message ha- has been look they're going to tire, and that's a concern for me right because if teams come and sit in, uh, like it's mental fatigue more than anything right if you're not actually coming out and having a go, um, but also if you're holding on to something like if you're no nil at Celtic Park like we see Mr Johnson you're you're energized right so. Teams get tired when they're losing at Celtic Park. They don't get tired when they're holding on to something. So th- that's a concern for me. I think we can't be waiting for teams to get tired uh, in order to win these games. And that's something I'd, I'd hope 
we're not relying on going forward. Uh, but yeah, but apart from that, I, th- I thought Alice Johnson was was sensational. Hits the bar, hits the the post. Uh, I know they both count as technically shots off target, but like. What else could well, the one off the bar is is actually shot on target. Save, it's a really good save. save by like, sorry, he, you're right. Yeah. He makes himself big. Like he doesn't know too much about it, but he makes mm. himself big and he gets something on it, and and yeah, it hits the bar. So he probably he probably gets a bit of a bit of good fortune just from sort sort of making himself big. But uh, yeah, I agree. Johnson had a great game. Yeah, and yeah, and uh, it's funny, right? Because he's bombing up and down, right? And then we're talking about Taylor going back to inversion. We're also mm. talking about Joe Hart not being asked to play football anymore to just be a goalkeeper. Like, and, and I guess that was the message that came out after the CFCO game was that uh, you know there was some soul searching and things have kind of gone back to basics. And, and it seems like that's kind of what's happening now, right? We're just asking players to do the things that they're good at, which is, uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's, it's a wider picture thing, a bigger picture message, right? In well, fairness think, to Joe Hart, though, he sorry. did he did sweeper keeper a couple of times. There was a couple of times where he came well off his mm, line to yeah. to to get to. I mean, not you know not to necessarily play passes and be part of the footballing bit, but to actually intercept and thought he made a couple of timely interventions. There was one where I didn't expect him to be there, and his, the camera sort of pans, and it's like, oh, <laughs> there's Joe Hart. It's like, oh, okay, well, fair play, Joe, because like whew, that was a it was a very ballsy call. He come all the way out there and 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 intercept sort of thing, but. I thought he had an excellent game because he didn't do yeah, Ibrox, right? He, wasn't, he, wasn't, he didn't do, he didn't come as, he didn't have to come as far, but he, I think yeah. he did one or two at Ibrox where he comes to the edge of his box or just beyond, um, just to take the pressure off the defense and, and get rid. Um, I agree with you. He's he, after a wobbly preseason and a wobbly start to the season. Um, he's he's looking bang on form, which is good because we need it. And the the point remains: as long as he stays fit, I think we're fine. Um, if not, then I don't even want to contemplate that. It gives me, I've said it many times, it gives me the absolute fear. So mm-hmm. let's let's move swiftly on and hope that Joey stays as fit as possible all season round. I thought uh, Lager, Lagerbjelk had a really good second half when he came on, I thought. Much better than, uh, than he has been in the last couple of games. Uh, I thought he was pretty solid. Because, you know, Dundee... I know they had that one massive chance in the first half, but he did have a couple of half chances in the second half as well. But uh, I thought he was he went oh. in pretty solidly. And it's his strongly. pace. It's his pace. It's the issue. Pace what is me? His pace what is me? That's 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 the concern, particularly in Europe. He's going to get found out for pace. It's not that he's in the wrong position or he's not strong enough. He's not. You know, it's the one thing Carl Starfelt had. Oodles of pace. He could run Lame. down anybody, and Vlad Bielk is not that. So. I know he was brought in as a bit of a development. He wasn't expecting to get as much game time, but I think you've really got your skills and 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 Phillips. Um, Do we know that Phillips is fast? Is that well? Uh, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't get beat. He didn't get beat for pace. So I don't. I, in the in the forty five minutes, so obviously he's rolled his ankle. So I mean, we're hoping he's fit. Um, but for me, that's the that's the primary concern because that's two games now where in a running race he looked slow and if stevie may's outrunning you and then uh, you know i don't know the relative pace of the, the guy on the weekend but um yeah it's just in scotland you get away with it but in champions league football those chances fall to better players um we could be we could be in trouble well he nearly never got away with it because he gets he gets roasted luckily johnson belts across at probably twice the pace that lagabielka was running at to put in a bit of a last ditch challenge to slow up the ball, it still breaks and they cut it. And then I think it's Bakayoko has yeah. a, just a terrible finish on the six yard, like he six yards out, he's got to score. Obviously, yeah. it's three 0 at that point, so it's 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 a consolation at best. But <clears throat> that's an absolute sitter. That's arguably a better chance than the one at the end of the first half where Hart stands up big. And I, look, we, we've got problems at centre back. 100% with a choice of the, the three. Um, scales for bizarrely, right? This is the weirdest thing. Scales has got to start. <laughs> set one. He's a set one. He's a set one. Do you know what I mean? One, because he's got the left sided balance. Two, because he's he's clearly going to be feeling more confident. He's, you know, like any player, there's a confidence element, but particularly a player like him who has nearly been so far out of the picture. He was, I'm sure he thought he'd be playing his football at Aberdeen this year. We certainly all did. Mm-hmm. And but for the injuries, he's that's the only reason he's still here. Um, and he's got an opportunity, right? I don't think, to me, I, I was sort of thinking about this the other day or between, sort of between since Saturday night, basically. I, I kind of see him as a bit like a, 
I don't know, a Gary Caldwell or a Steve McManus, right? Like a good solid pro that will do a job for you in Scotland, but you know, is set, you know, is limited. Nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with him, but he's that's not the level we really want for Europe and, and to, to push on beyond. But you know, asked to do a job, you know, he'll 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 put his best foot forward. Is the, like the little clips through I did like his distribution seems a bit better. Positionally, yeah. he you know, he can get turned. And I think that, you know, he's he's not the quickest either. He's probably quicker than Lagabielka. Um, but he's played with both of the others, at least for some of a game. Phillips and um or sort of um Phillips and Lagabielka, I've seen that as a combo with scales being dropped. I just they've played zero minutes together, right? So mm-hmm. I can't believe I can't believe that that'll be um sort of road tested in a first Champions League game. So for me it's the scales and then it's a choice of Phillips or, or Lagabielka. For me, I would agree with you, Anthony. I'd go I'd go Phillips. Um I think his his main problems first half were for some reason he was asked to be the main distributor out of defense, which seemed daft to me because everything we'd read and heard about him in the run up to him joining or just after he joined was that he was a big solid stopper and he would get his head and body in the way and he'd defend his area. That's perfect. We could that well do with one of them. But then he shouldn't be the quarterback starting every every attack for the defensive area, right? That's not what he's should there for. And yeah, they well, shut down the figure, but but then that's where you've got to get it out to your fullbacks and then work it through the midfield. Don't let him come all the way up to, you know, the 18 yard boxes as we saw. And then the only other thing that he, error he made is he got a little bit under that ball at the end of the end of the first half and he got a bit of a head on it, but equally Johnson's a bit lax as well. Letting, letting the fullback run in behind him and, and doesn't really put a strong enough challenge in for my book either. So he's not, he's at fault there, but he's not the only one at fault. And thankfully Hart stood big and made the save. Hmm. Andrew, anything else? The only thing I was trying Probably. to say, all thing I was just trying to say was that Phil, that was Philip's first competitive match since a FA Cup game for mm-hmm. Liverpool back in January. So you know he's not yeah. had a lot of football. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, I think you can excuse a certain amount of rustiness, particularly around the the longer range passing and and whatnot. But I think those defensive bread and butter type skills are there, um, and I think we're going to need them. <laughs> Uh, to her night, so you know he'd definitely be the one I'd be I'd be penciling in. Obviously, on the proviso that his ankle's okay, but rolled ankle, we should hopefully be alright. Strap it up and good to good to go. Uh, I think by the time most people listen to us, they'll already have the spoiler of what's uh, happened, what the team was, how it's all played out, and hopefully it's all positive. Um, I'd like to do a cinch moment of the week, but since we're on just kind of briefly touching Feyenoord, let's just quickly do a round of uh, score predictions for that game before we do this. Uh, Paul, what do you reckon? How are we, go- how are we going to fare uh, in the Netherlands? Well, I'm not overly optimistic, um, uh, but I will try and be a little bit positive and say we will scrape out with a score and draw okay Anthony I was going to say two each uh, I, can, I can't see his keep a clean sheet but I can also see his maybe storm so um, that's optimistic me um, quite easily could be 2-0 no or 2-1 but um, I'll say two each uh, I reckon we're going down 3-1 unfortunately uh, it's an away game top seed they're in fine form we're not Hope we're wrong. Hope I'm wrong. But the last time we won a Champions League game was, I don't know, Anderlecht. Was that the last time? Yep. Pad- Paddy Roberts scored. So, yeah. Look, we need to turn it around at some point. Hopefully it starts tomorrow, but I- I'm not overly keen. So, yeah, look, I, get- I, I, sorry, just, just, just as I said earlier, I think there's, it could be a perfect storm in that, you know, both teams have got key players missing. Um, it's early in the season. Look, I don't think you'd like, we're better off playing them now there than going there at any other point and later in the, in the fixture list because of the suspension and the injuries and, and all of that. So the Japanese striker was really keen to play. He got injured in the game against Germany. He's the guy who, Ueda, I think it is. He's the guy who battles it out with both Mieda and, um, as well as Matomo and Mieda and Kyogo for that for that front spot. So a bit of an advantage. We've lost, they've lost him and Jimenez, and they've got a third choice in. And like I said, the goal is injured as well. So I don't know. 
Um, might be a clash of styles that actually ends up suiting us, but that's me with my optimistic hat on as well. And it, you quite you're right, you're right, Sean. If we sat here and be we're pessimistic, we'd quite easily see us getting gubbed. So we're trying. I'll try and keep it positive on the back of a couple of de decent results, albeit um, maybe not completely fluent performances for the full ninety. I'd feel more optimistic if uh, Arna Slot had took the Tottenham job and we still had Postacoglu heading over there and they were under a new manager. But hey, that is what it is. Sliding doors. Uh, so any candidates for cinch moment of the week before we come back to the Celtic game? Uh, the What was... Oh, I don't know if you put it in the group chat, Sean, the one with the... Um... Is the Morton player trying to fake the oh, elbow? Yeah. I, or? I posted that on my, my, my ex account. Uh, is that what you call it nowadays? Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the, Neymar, the Neymar dive from the Morton player. Uh, it was, yeah, you need to check, check out my Twitter if you've not seen that. Uh, it's pretty. What's your handle, Sean? What's your handle, Sean? Oh, I don't know. Sean Down Under? Something like that. There may or may not be underscores in between those. Uh, what do we say now? Posts, tweets? Oh, who knows what it is anymore. But yeah, you check that one out. Mort Morton Dundee United. Uh, you, test, can also test. you can also chuck in um, Todd Campwell's social media activity. That is always worth an absolute laugh. He's he's uh, gone social media Karen uh, posting he's stuff about... De championing devil dogs, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the funniest he's a fan thing of was... The devil he, dog. He was replying to the tweets as well. Uh, to, he yeah, he was. He was getting involved. He was getting involved in the debate. So uh, yeah, that was that was entertaining. Oh, man, that guy has just—I don't know what. Like some of the well, stuff he's, he comes. He's got to fill his time now that he's injured. You know, he, yeah, he's not playing, so you know. Oh man! Like if that guy was made of chocolate, he would eat himself. I swear. <laughs> like, he, and it's like—I guess his legs are as well after what's happened recently. But yeah, uh, and the, see there. Not not an essential moment of the week, but there, uh, six million pound striker is going to be out for a bit as well. Oh, he, oh he's got a horrible injury. That's that an bad, orbital yeah. fracture. That is, yeah, that is ready to take time. That they are, they are. I was talking to a mate as a doctor. He says they are like horrible injuries. That's really mm -hmm. really bad. He's not really That's bad. What, you need to, is that not like, what Carl Mack? Is that not what Carl Mack had? And uh, yeah, his so wasn't as nice bad. Well, I don't yeah. think. I don't think his was as bad. I think uh, it depends whether it's a depressed fracture or not. So, like, remember Mastorovic had it and his face was all caved in. So, I think Danilo's was more like that. Uh, Kalmak did have it, but I think his wasn't as bad. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember sure. how long he was out for. He was out for a wee bit, uh, quite a few weeks, and then he had to wear the mask. at least four, the mask four weeks and then he had to wear the mask. Mm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, Mastorovic was out much longer. He was months. Um I can't remember. Somebody else had it as well. But yeah, it, it looks bad. It always does look bad. Uh, so we'll circle back to the Celtic game unless was, there's just, any more. Sorry, Sean. Just, I was just yep. going to say, it's not, not since a cinch moment of the week, but while we're run, reviewing the rest of the league, um, interesting comments from uh, Barry Robson after Aberdeen got beaten again this time. Oh, by uh, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, so heard, 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 five seen. games, no wins, uh, three defeats and two draws leaves them. Bang on goal difference with St Johnston at the bottom of the league. Um, again, I I agree. I still I agree with him. He said it again. He said that. Did you see? I think his comment was along the lines of, "Did you hear me getting carried away when we were going really well last season? No. Am I getting carried away now when things aren't going so well? No. We're good enough to get out of this." And he kind of he was a bit he was pretty bullish. Um, but I said this a couple of weeks, two or three weeks ago. I I think he will turn it around. That they, they, it is a good. They put together a good squad. Sooner or later, he'll get a result or two. And is he going to get the time, up. though? Is he going to get the time? Who did he put in this week? Frank, Eintracht Frankfurt on Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be and, fair, you don't expect... He's, he's expected zero from that, right? So... Well, then they've got Ross County, double header, and then Sevco at Ibrox. So I guess it's coming down to those Ross County games, isn't it? Whether he gets to go to Ibrox or not. He'll get to go to Ibrox. There's no way he takes, if it takes him to where he did... Um, and takes him to third and gets him into you know a run at Europe again, and he gets binned. Like mm. he, it, it doesn't take much. Look at it. Like he's he's only on two points, but he's only seven points from fourth. Right. That's I mean, that, that, that league. Film, man. You'll turn it around. You'll turn it around. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting in terms of the commentary. I I um I expect to see Aberdeen pushing up the league pretty soon. Weren't Hearts, didn't Hearts bend their manager last year when they were in the, the group stage of Europe? 
which one like was it oh, the three head not the three headed not the, not the three headed manager they had at the beginning of this well, season well he's 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 gone now because oh, you know they don't need to eat him anymore I don't even remember. It was it. Robbie Nielsen. Rob, Robbie, Robbie Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah, yeah. They binned Robbie Nielsen, right? After finishing yeah, third, getting him into Europe. So, like, it's, it's a tip. He'd been there. Um, he'd been there a fair the few only, years, though, right? The only thing that he's victim of his own success. So, this having to play in Europe and they having to play Ross County because you know Ross County aren't playing in Europe. They're just preparing for playing against Aberdeen. So he's going to have a tough task getting getting a result against Ross County on the weekend. So he's going to have to play his cards. Very carefully, otherwise, we're going yeah. sixth in the table as well. And they've played mm. uh Celtic and Sevco, mm. and they're sitting sixth, so you know, they've lost they've lost the Celtic and Sevco, and apart from that, they've won two and drawn. So, you know, yeah, they're, they're, like literally, Hearts and Ross County are sitting fifth and sixth with two wins, so that's that's all it takes is to stick you halfway up the league is two wins. Do you know what I mean? Ah, but not... I think for for St. Mirren and Motherwell, right, second and third, they've not played Celtic or Sevco yet, right. Whereas Ross County have played both. So you can kind of always add that asterisk, right? You can't tell until 11 games, really. Uh, speaking of which, third versus Thor, uh, fourth this weekend. Uh, is that, no, sorry. That can't be right. Who's winner or Sevco playing Motherwell? Uh, is it this weekend? Yeah, it is. Sunday. Wait, yeah, it's this weekend. Yeah, so Sevco. Yeah, sorry. We were playing Livingston. Yeah, so Sevco are playing yeah. Motherwell this weekend. So whoever wins that is going to be sitting in third or second place. Well, as long as we do our business at Spaghetti well, Head, they'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Maybe because Saint Mirren, Saint Mirren have got hearts. So if they win that, they'll they'll continue onwards. Aye, so yeah, but if somebody wins it, they're going to be at least third, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Hearts of Ross County could, yeah, even well, obviously not Livingston. But yeah, it's so obviously five games and it's all very open. But yeah, I think you have to say when teams play Celtic and Sevco, that's when it really starts to shake out. You know, I don't. I think the Simmerin Murrow thing might be a mirage, but also you can get a kind of head of confidence and steam uh, around these things as well. Anyway, south game. Uh, any final points, and then we'll do a man of match. So, anything we've not discussed? Any points you got written down that we've not caught, Anthony, Paul? I don't write anything down anymore, Sean. So, no, I'm good. I think we covered everything. I can't think of anything else that sort of um, we that, that I didn't want to talk about. So, I'm pretty good. Paul, I just we didn't really cut, like talk about the third goal that much. I, I think like Johnson's pass is excellent, but Kyogo again running off the shoulder and just bends his run one touch, and it's in. And O'Reilly doesn't have to break stride; he just has to open his foot up, and he tucks it away really well. So, yeah, that was you know if Kyogo's if if the Kyogo goal beforehand and um, wasn't probably as good, we'd probably more be talking about that great bit of interplay but but the, the second goal is just out of this world so it, you know kind of got the headlines but yeah it's a really good good goal and good to see matt taking his chances again after a few missed opportunities after the early start so hopefully that gets him up and running again well look he's joint second or if you use assist as a tiebreaker he's the the clear second place top scorer in the league behind kyogo so if you if you the official goal scoring charts would have Kyogo top and uh, Matt O'Reilly in second. Uh, just because generally a sister uses a tiebreaker. So um, let's. Uh, who I can't remember who was first last week, but we'll do our man in a match. Uh, I'm happy to go first if you want. I don't care. Go for uh, it. I think so it'll I, be a clean sweep, so it's neither here nor there, but on you uh, go. Okay, well, the, the sponsors, the, so what Celtic have started doing now, and I, I didn't know this until the weekend there, is they, they put up a poll on Twitter now. For man in a match that gets voted on, so I think before it used to just be some rando in in the corporate box got to pick someone, and that was kind of how they did it. Uh, and now they've, they've got this X dot com Twitter poll, whatever you want to call it, and the winner of that was Kyogo. Uh, no, I, th- I thought obviously Kyogo was excellent, but actually for me, my man in a match was was Alistair Johnson. I thought he was everywhere, uh, first and second half, and. Uh, he he gets my vote probably controversially and probably a dissenting vote, but I'm I'm giving it to Alistair Johnson, even though Kyogo was great and um oh, whose other name I had down now? Uh Maeda. It wasn't Maeda, no. Um oh, come back to me. Sorry, you guys go. Well, I my <clears throat> I thought Maeda was definitely a potential candidate. I think had he had scored that goal, I think he probably would have been my man of the match, just throw that opening goal. But I'm um, really to Kyogo. I thought he was just to to get, you know, I think Poppy shoulder back and then come in and store store one and set one up. 
Um, the wee man's just on another level. There's levels, and he's just on another um, or not or alternate reality, or whatever you want to call it. But he's just uh, in a plane of existence, just much better than everyone else. And um, we're do, we're now starting to pick out those runs that he makes that are just next level. So yeah, Kyogre all the way by the match this week. Yeah, the other name I had written down was Hitati. I know he came on like later on, but it, it's it's not the first time. It wouldn't be the first time he'd get man of match from coming on as a sub. So I thought he kind of turned the game as we talked about. Paul, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Hitati did, did brilliant when he came on. Um, and yeah, I'm agreeing with Anthony. I thought it would be a clean sweep. Um, Sean, you've uh, you've decided to be obtuse, but that's okay. We all have different opinions. <laughs> Contrary, yeah, a bit of um, but yeah, I uh, I agree with Anthony. He was he was the absolute the difference in terms of quality. Um, I spoke at length about his run and finish. Um, only as good as the, the, the Calmax assist, uh, and then yeah, another assist as well. So for me, he's he's the clear winner of of the man of the match. I agree with Anthony. I think um, honorable mention to my idea as, as well, because he was, uh, he was excellent first half in, in an otherwise reasonably poor performance as we touched on. Um, and, and then it was actually, he actually um, proved to do a better job than he has done previously when he went to the right. So quite often we see him when he fills across on the right, he doesn't really do as much. He's not as useful as he is when he's on the left, but I was actually um, pleasantly surprised by his contribution when he switched, which is why I'm sort of, leaning towards him starting on the right and, and Palmer coming on from the left because um, I think Palmer had um, something like 18 completed passes in the time he was on the pitch, which it's more is, than Yang. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was more than Yang in the, in, the, in, the, in the whole period beforehand. So I agree with Anthony. You know, Yang looked busy without having an end product and, he, you know, I think he got a bit frustrated um, and he certainly looked good in cameos, but he's obviously a work in progress as well. So... Yeah, that's uh, Kyogo for me, but uh, a few honourable mentions as well, and certainly um, a much better team performance second half. Yeah, my feeling on, on Palmer was like he was tidy, which kind of sounds like faint praise, right? But mm. at the same time, you're mentioning 18 passes, and you don't get that many passes if your first touch isn't absolutely on it every time, right? Mm. So I, I think that was more it, that he looks like really a technical player, and, and we'll, I guess just time will tell uh, if, if the rest of it bears out. Um, yeah, anyway, um, so that was Kyogo Man of the Match, uh, as per Twitter poll and uh, our weekend review pundits. Uh, any final thoughts before we sign off, Anthony? Anything you'd like to share? Mention, <clears throat> I uh, enjoyed watching Carlos Signs win a Grand Prix last night. Max Verstappen was nowhere near it, which is great. Um, very entertaining race at Singapore. Um, Mercedes changed tires with about 15 laps to go, so they were chasing down the front pack of Carlos and uh, Lando Norris, and it became a very, very nail-biting race um, right to the finish. So uh, nice, as opposed to the usual Verstappen 35 seconds ahead of everybody else. So it was uh, quite novel when, you know, if it was more Grand, Grand Prix like that, I think Formula 1 would, would be all right. But um, that, and uh, my shirt's in the mail, Paul, so that's a very nice shirt you're wearing. Um, mine's on its way. Thank you. But you sat you sat two hours in a queue. I didn't, so fair play. Um, I got in, in like yeah. I got in, in about two minutes, mate. Um because it was it was it was mid afternoon here when it uh, when it happened. So uh, one of the guys card handy. One of the guys on was... the group chat posted it. Shane, thank you, Shane. Yeah. About show, Shane, yeah. he posted it on the group chat and I went, oh, I'll give it a crack. And then I got kicked out and I was like, just jump straight back in and I jumped the queue and I was straight in. So yeah, snapped it up in less than five minutes. So um I, th I reckon it was about 8 a.m. In, in Scotland, so a few people probably still eating their breakfast when uh, when it went live here. So, yeah, I managed to snaffle it. And uh, I think it was a week from release to arriving here. So I, I posted that on Twitter, and I, a bloke tweeted me back and said, uh, I'm only 200, minute, 200 miles up the road, and I've still not got mine. So <laughs> <laughs> there you, there you go. Look globalization uh, shipping from yeah, taiwan indeed. right yeah. yeah well who knows came in the it came in the box strip like the usual selling packaging box i think it did come from glasgow mm -hmm. but um yeah happy to get it and it's uh it's an absolute belter so um no dh gate for me <laughs> don't mind, no, no, not affiliated other other rip-off agencies are available uh we don't get sponsored by them 
Paul, yeah. anything to say now? Yeah, uh, music ref- uh, music recommendation for the week is um, uh, one of my favourite bands, again, The National. Now, mm-hmm. they had uh, an album out in at the end of April, and today they've dropped another album. Um, so they have uh, an album called Laugh Track, which came out today. Um, managed to have a couple of listens um, uh, on the way in, to and from work, which yeah. it's, uh, it's up to the usual standards. Uh, it's basically a companion album to the one that came out earlier this year. And on top of that, um, they also announced uh, an Australian tour early next year, mm. which I am gutted to be missing. I'm on a, a two week uh, holiday with my wife. So uh, that's all booked and planned. So unfortunately, I will be enjoying some family time with my wife and my dogs. And I will not be going to see one of my favourite bands at Kings Park in Perth, or uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, or Sydney. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll have to make do with the other gigs that I've got lined up for the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, to it now. Send you, send you a video. Tour announced uh, 28th of February, Brisbane, and then early March for Sydney, Melbourne, and Perth. Tickets pre-sale Wednesday in Australia and a live uh, general sale Friday. Mm, Hopefully not too expensive. Uh, I'm I'm going to see Kevin Bridges next month. No, November, not next month. Uh, Me too. uh, That was was expensive, eh? $100 a ticket. Kind of what you expect these days, to be honest. Like... um, like last time he was here a few years ago and he was about 80, 85. So kind of goes CPI. with the territory, I think. Yeah, CPI. Yeah, are you so going the, Are you going the first night or the, the second night the that thir- was released? The first night, yeah, the Thursday. Yeah, me too. It, it, the, the pre-sale, the full show sold out on pre-sale. So they had to have the second date before like before they even opened up the public sale. Yeah, I managed to snaffle them on the pre-sale. I'm pretty pleased. Yeah, same. Somebody posted it on the, the Scots in Perth thing. So yeah, snaffled. Uh, yeah, apart from that... Uh, I don't think I've got anything else that I've read or listened to. Uh, I'm getting jealous of all these Xbox people that are getting to play Starfield. I'd like to get in in that action, but I need to wait till I've got my, my finances back under control. Building a house is expensive business. Uh, yes. You look like you've played it, Anthony, no? Yeah, no? No, I was just trying to say, apparently it takes about 30 hours for it to get good. So really? um, you're going to oh. need some time. So it's uh, maybe a summer project for you, Sean. Uh, no football, oh. maybe. Fill, fill the gap, but... Um, it's a bit of a slow burn from all accounts from what I've read and watched. So. I'm a Fallout fan, so I expect it'll be good. But yeah, who knows? Anyway, that's uh, I think that's enough for us tonight. We're well over runtime. Uh, apologies. And thanks if you're still listening. Uh, can you please follow us on all our social medias along the top here, usual place? Can you please like uh, this video if you're watching or listening on YouTube? Uh, and other than that... Uh, We'll speak to you next week after hopefully uh, a po- positive result in Feyenoord and a win uh, in Livingston. Uh, and apart from that, uh, hail, hail, and I'll see you all. Hail, hail. hail, hail.